Not long ago, I posted on Twitter a uh, screen record of this uh, or a similar keyboard chop setup that I uh, that I had created. Um, in the Twitter setup, I was sort of controlling this live here. I've pre-recorded um, input from my computer keyboard, my physical keyboard. I've recorded that in chops and it's driving um, a number of these keys on the keyboard. So I'm going to show you today how I set this up. I'm going to talk through uh, some of the concepts in chops, um, sort of sort of some of the uh, uh, basic concepts of chops that, that make this work, uh, and I'm going to build out the uh, build out this this setup. Uh, some of it I might not go step by step. I might just sort of like explain this node tree, but I'm not going to leave anything out. I'm just not going to step by step press every button, build everything. So let's uh, let's jump right in, and I'll show you how to how to set up something like this. So I should also say I have a lot of other uh, chop tutorials. If uh, if you feel like at any point in this lesson some of these things are going over your head, or I'm not taking long enough to explain them, I, I have a dedicated keyboard chop tutorial. I have uh, several others, um, and I'll I'll have links to those. So check those out. Come back if this stuff feels like it's over your head. Um, so now I'm going to talk kind of uh, sort of theory. Maybe maybe theory is not a good way to say it, but just the uh, I'm going to talk approach about how I wanted to. Uh, tackle this problem. Uh, first thing I knew uh, with my model here, I knew, and this model came from Sketchfab. I'll have a, uh, I'll have a link to that. It was free, so you can grab this. Uh, it's got a couple like reversed faces that I clean up. Uh, that's not important right now. Um, but I knew looking at this model, a couple things. Uh, one, I knew I didn't want to attempt to split out each key individually and assign a transform node and and animate that um, node by node. It'd be too much work. I don't feel like it would look as good. And, and I just, I know there's a better way to do it. So uh, that was step one. I knew I didn't want to animate keys individually. And then step two was if, if I split out this board and if I go into, let me turn this off. If I go into the side view, you can see that uh, these keys sort of, they're, each row is going to have a slightly different angle that they, they're going to need to press in on. So I needed to solve for that too. Um, and so knowing what I know about uh, chops and how that works, and also knowing that there's specifically a, a keyboard chop that lets me use my computer's keyboard to uh, create inputs, uh, I knew I wanted to go that route. Um, but there was a, a few things I needed to consider. I, and I, really what I, the, the approach I came up with was I'm going to need a, a start pose or a start state for this keyboard, which is, which is what we've already got. And I'm going to need a key pressed state for the keyboard. And then I'm going to use uh, the information in chops. I'm going to use uh, attribute information to blend between those two positions on a per point basis. So knowing that, that gives me all I need to to really approach this. So I'm going to I'm going to walk through this bit of my um, geometry setup. So here I've just imported the geometry, transformed it down to a more reasonable size, and I've split out the keys. And then on this side, I'll get to that in a second. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create. Uh, animatable, or I'm going to create channels uh, that are going to hold animation per uh, key on my keyboard, and then I'm going to, via an attribute, I'm going to transfer those independent uh, animated channels to uh, each point. I'm going to bind those to each point via an attribute. So rather than have how many points do we have here, all these points feeding into chops, that's uh, that's it's not smart. I'm, I'm going to pack these. I'm going to pack this geometry. Uh, I'm just using the symbol swap, and I'm packing these as almost as if they were fragments of a fractured object. So the symbol swap will take 3D connected objects and create packed primitives out of those. And if I view this as centroid, you can see that in essence I just have one point, uh, one point per key, and that's exactly what I want. Um, and then on this side, what I've done is I've I've split off this. Let me turn on my wireframe. I've split off this curved plane because again. What we're dealing with here is the curvature of, of, of these keys. And what I need to do to, uh, to create my key pressed state is I need to define a, a sort of a, a vector for these uh, keys to travel along. And then if I take the normal from this curved plane, that should match up really closely. So I subdivided the plane a little bit, and then I assigned point normals to it. Now if I turn on my point normals, you'll see um, that that should loosely define the, the uh, vectors that the keys need to travel. So then from that point, I just transferred my normals from my keys to the points. So uh, just with an attribute transfer, I just set the point normals to transfer to my packed geometry. And if I hover over this information, left click on the normal, that should, yeah. Now we can see that these 
because right now I'm viewing my packed geometry. I, ha I have 100 points because that's how many keys I have. And we can see that the normals have been transferred onto there. And so from this point, this, this is really easy now to just create my secondary pose. And I can do that with a peak. I'll just drop this down and let's type peak. And what this does is it will dis it will displace uh, a geometry along its normal. So if I template this and look at my key pressed, so just, just peaking this down a little bit of a negative value will give me my secondary key pressed state. So geometry wise, that's, that's really what I need. So now I need a system to blend between the up state and the down state. Uh, and I want to do that via uh, point attributes. Um, so I'll go ahead and show, uh, show this and then I'll come back over here. So I'm just going to slide this over here and I'm going to make a null and call this uh, pressed. And then I'm going to make another null I'm just going to feed this from here. This has my my uh, point normals and everything. And I'm just going to call this up. Okay. And now I'm going to make an, an attribute vop. And I'm going to sort of set up a, a basic version of how to blend between these two things. So in, in our vop here, what I have is my current point position. And let's get a, I think it's import point attribute. Yep. And this defaults to the position attribute. So what I want to do, if you remember, I plugged in um, sort of my default state into input one and my key pressed state into input two. I want to grab that position information from my input two. So op input two, feed into file. Uh, it asks for the attribute. I already have the attribute, which is uh, my position. And so now I just need to blend between these two positions. So if I drop down and mix uh, a mix fop and I plug in my position from my uh, first context geometry and my position from my second context geometry and then let's pipe that back out this is the output of a op so plug that into the position because that's the that's the attribute that I'm looking to change and let's promote this um, yeah let's promote this bias just just for a moment and now when I go from zero to five th this is an odd viewport issue I, I discovered this while I was recording this video um, if I just drop an unpack here let's see yeah if I, if I unpack this geometry, uh, you can see this update. So now I'm updating, um, I'm blending between these positions sort of in a global way. But if I were to come in here and let's just get a, a turbulent noise and let's plug that up to our position. And then rather than this bias be driven by a constant, let's drive this by noise. And let's turn this into, I think a 1D noise is gonna be fine, but let's really up our frequency. And so now you can see, let me up my amplitude as well. So now you can see that on a per point basis, I'm able to control this sort of a blend shape between the, the up position and the down position. And I'm, I'm going beyond my down position because I've uh, upped my amplitude to a, to a ridiculous number to illustrate the point. So this is the setup. And now what I need to do is I need to, rather than use a noise, uh, rather than use noise for this bias, I need to create an attribute that I can animate with my keyboard uh, to feed this this bias between these mixed positions. So we're going to hop into chops and do that now. So let's go up one level. Um, I will likely delete this. I'll, do, I'll just build that for an example. Um, so I said we're about to hop into chops, and uh, that is true, but we also, uh, there's one thing I forgot to mention that I'm going to go over now, is we need to create some order to these points because... Um, when we look at our point order here, and point order is going to be really, um, it's going to be really important, and you'll see why in just a second. Um, these points are all over the map. It's like 90, 91, and 62. They they have some some semblance of order, but like right here, 41, 40, 59, 39. So it's not going to work. Um, what I need to do is I need to create some order here so that I know that my top rows of keys is from left to right ordered zero to whatever the highest number is. And that's easy enough to do with a, uh, a sort sop. You can change your point sort to um, X or even Z, depending on how your keyboard's oriented in your scene. Um, and that'll give you ordered points. And if you do that for each row of keys that, uh, that you're gonna feed into chops, each row of keys that you wanna control, uh, when you merge them together, the merge sop will take the, the first input, like the leftmost input, and start the ordered points there, and then pick up where the um, pick up at the next number with the second input, but maintain your point order that's that's in that geometry stream. So that's important. 
uh, to have ordered points just so that you can reliably know what animation um, information you are assigning to each point. And that'll become more clear here in a second. But it's worth noting that uh, if you want reliable results, you need to know what you're feeding into chops. All right, so the, the next thing is, I've mentioned a couple of times, we need, you know, like in this example over here where we were using the turbulent noise to drive the positions of our keys, we need to create an attribute that we're later gonna modify inside of chops um, that, that's gonna control this blend. So I've just created a float attribute that I'm calling blend and I leave the value set to zero. And then I create um, a create a null that I'm gonna, at, at one point I was referencing this into chops. I found out, I figured out a way after doing it a couple times that I don't even need to reference my geometry into chops, but it's worth noting that if you need to pull it in, just have a, have a null that you can pull in. So this is the point in our um, geometry stream where we're gonna start doing work at chops. So let's open our chop network and I'll explain what I have here. I'm also gonna open up my, I'm gonna un, unfold my uh, motion effects view. If you need to, to get this up, you can just uh, split pane top and bottom and then right click on the tab and go to viewers motion effects view. And that'll give you this. So I'm gonna turn this off and I'm really just gonna rebuild this all together. So the first thing we need, as, as we've said, probably as I've beaten this into the ground, what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to create uh, animatable channels, uh, one channel per point in our geometry. So let's drop down a keyboard chop to begin with. And um, I do have a longer tutorial on, on the keyboard chop. Feel free to check that out if I move too quickly here. Uh, the keyboard chop expects you to define a channel name. So like when you click this blue flag, that will show you, let me change the color here that's going to show you uh, whatever channels are present in this chop. Currently, we only have one. Um, that's called K1. And currently, the like the trigger for this is the one button on your row of keys. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this to Q. And I'm going to change the value to match, So just so that I know what I'm doing. And then I'm also going to say the next key on my keyboard is W, E. You can see where I'm going with this. So I'm going to do W, um, E. And a couple gotchas about the keyboard chop is it can only do nine keys at a time. So I had to use multiple of these. So anyway, let's just leave this here. And now the other, the last thing to know about this is to, to get Houdini to stop recognizing your keyboard as an input device, like to for hot keys or to, to navigate around the viewport, you need to go into intercept mode. And what this does, this, this changes how your keyboard functions. So now rather than being an input device for uh, controlling the software, it's an input device to control this chop. So now when I hit uh, Q, W, oop, this was set to V, let me set this to W. So when I hit Q, W, E, you can see the corresponding channel to the key bounce from zero to one. And using the keyboard chop is, that's that's really all you need to know to set this up. Um, let me hop out of intercept mode and then I'm gonna, I'm just gonna copy and paste these. Delete. Uh, just so that you're not watching me go through and um, set up, uh, monotonously set up all these different keys. So I'm going to merge these together the same as you would in SOPs. And let's check out this channel. All right, let's check out the channels of this chop. Um, it's probably hard to see, but I have Q all the way through M. That matches the order, the order of my uh, keys on my keyboard. Also, if you middle click over here, you can see I now have 28 channels because I have 0 to 27, which is 28 points. I need a matching number of points to channels to avoid errors when I bring this information back into SOPs. So 28, uh, 28 points, 28 channels. Uh, and now I need, to, I need to map these channels to the blend attribute that we've created on these points. So as is right now, uh, these channels are named by their letter. Uh, to get this to match uh, in, in SOPs, I need to change this name to, to be a blend, to, to have the attribute name and then the corresponding point number that I want to assign it to. So a couple ways to do this. Originally, I was bringing in my, um, I was bringing in this geometry, the geometry of this point in the stream, I was bringing that in with the uh, blend attribute and have that represented as a channel. And then I was using a, a chop vop to assign these values to the, the blend channel. But then I started thinking it's probably I don't really need to do that. I can just I can just rename these channels to be what I need them to be and then reference them in that way. So that's what I ended up doing. It's a little bit cleaner setup, but it's it may be not as obvious or explicit what we're doing. So let's drop down a rename. Um, 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to rename everything. That's that, that star or the wild card. So I'm going to rename every channel uh, in this stream to blend. And I thought that I could just do blend star. And then, you know, what that would do if we middle click, I've got blend cube. Yeah, that's that's not going to that's not doing what I want. What I need is I need these to be blend 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all the way down to 27. So the way to do that is if you put square brackets and then just define your range 0 through 27. Now, when I look at it, I have blend, which is my base name, and then it's it's numbering these channels in the order that they're coming in. Um, it's, it's just naming them according to the number that they come in, 0 through 27. If you needed this to be 10 through 37 or whatever, you, you would define it there, and then that would be the name that you get. Um, so that, it, really, that's all you do in shops here. Let's drop down a null, and I'm going to just call this out. Out. Let's highlight it, and then let's hop back up to chop, or back up to sops, and we'll bring this in. Um, here, I'm going to delete, well, let's see, I'll, I'll, I'll make a new one of these. Uh, to bring information out of shops into SOPs, uh, the way to do that is to use a channel SOP. Okay, so we have a channel SOP, and now when you uh, when you activate that, you get an error for a number of reasons. The first reason is you need to define which chop you're, um, you need to reference the correct chop. So I'm going to pull my out null, that's the one that we just created uh, here, and then secondly, we need to say uh, a, well, a couple things. We need to say what what are the names of all the channels that you're that you're bringing in. So ours are named blend. Now I mean, they're technically named blend zero through twenty eight or through twenty seven. But if you just type in blend and then say which attribute scope you're going to apply that to. So this is the channel scope. This says hey, which chop channels are you do you intend to bring into SOPs? You say oh, any of them that are titled blend, bring those in. And then it says, well, where do you want to put them? What, do you, where, what are you assigning these to? So I'm going to assign these also to my blend attribute. And it still didn't work. And the reason being is we need to set this to animated. And as soon as we set that to animated, um, we're going to get uh, values. And we can see this. I'm going to show in a geometry spreadsheet. Let's go into intercept mode. Now, when I hit my, my Q key, the blend value on my point zero changes from zero to one. And as I go down the keyboard, you can see all those blend attributes changing. So my my chop channels are now um, linked to the the point attribute values for this blend, and that's what this channel stops doing. So let me get out of intercept mode, and I'll just delete my old channel and plug in the new one. And now in this uh, VOP, you can see this is the same thing that I set up in our example where I was using the noise. But rather than driving our bias with a, I'll delete this, rather than driving it with a constant or with noise, let's pull in via a bind attribute, or just a bind, let's pull in the float attribute that is called blend. And now let's connect that there, connect that to our bias. And now if we look at our unpacked geometry, let's turn off our points. Um, let's come into our motion effects view so we can see our channels moving up and down. And let's go to intercept mode. We've got, uh, I'll do it on my loud keyboard so you can get a nice sound. So we've got this live link going on between our uh, physical keyboard and our keyboard model. Um, and that's that's really it. That's really the, the bulk of it. Now, if you want to, I'm sure you, you are going to want to. Um, let's hop out of intercept mode. You're going to want to record this, or otherwise, why did we build it if you can't really render it? So to do that, there's a record chop. You just drop that in line. Usually last before your uh, output. Uh, it's going to be default set to start recording uh, values to these channels anytime that you press play uh, down here in your frame range. So that's all good. Uh, but once this, once your play range, or once once your um, once you sort of loop around, uh, if your playback is set to loop, uh, you're going to start overwriting the your sort of uh, as the playhead goes. It's going to overwrite your values. So to avoid that, just set your play uh, your these play preferences. Just set that to play once. <laughs> Let's hop back into intercept mode, and let's go. We'll just type. And what you can see is that as I'm just bogus typing here, um, those channels are populating with uh, all kinds of impulses from my keyboard. All right. Now, if we were to if we were to go back here and start playing again, those get overwritten. So, you know, don't 
don't override them if you don't want to. Um, I'll just type some more, and then I'll do it one last time. Now that's good enough. And to avoid these getting overwritten, what you need to do is you need to turn this off. So turn your record off. And then in SOPs, you have the option to uh, lock a SOP to sort of keep the to keep the scene from updating and it sort of like writes that information into your hip file. You don't have that same option here, but what you can do is save data channels as, I typically will save these as a chan file, chan dot chan. So you can write that file out. I'm not gonna do it, but if you write that file out and then uh, what you can do is you can bring it back in via a file chop and then just plug it in there. And that will um, that will sort of save your, your animation take if you wanna call it that. Uh, as long as as long as the record chop is set to off, you're not going to overwrite it uh, within one Houdini session. But if you close this out and open it again, all this information is going to be gone. Uh, so if you got something you like, just save that out as a Chan file, reference it back in, and, you, and you're good to go. Um, and really, that's it. So now we can uh, we can play. We can turn this back to loop, and our scene is happy, right? Oops, what about I'm missing something here? What have I missed? Oh, I know what I've done. I need to unpack it, or let's set that to full geometry. And there we go. So there's our full keyboard uh, typing. Uh, I've got a mix of packed and unpacked geometry. I can probably turn that back off. But yeah, there it is. So if you found this interesting, feel free to um, subscribe to the channel. Uh, follow me on Twitter if you want more regular updates. Uh, I, I'm not able to post uh, walkthroughs like this as often as I would like, but if you want to be notified when I do post those, uh, I think there's a there's a, a button that's a bell that you can press to get alerts uh, in YouTube. But if you subscribe, you'll get you'll get those anyway. Um, so I hope you enjoyed watching this. If you're more interested in uh, how to take things like this further, like say you wanted to uh, add sound to to this uh, at each at each interval. You can do that a couple of ways. You can use a copy chop, which functions kind of as a copy to points. There's uh, I cover the copy chop in another tutorial. Uh, there's other guys who have, um, I think it's maybe even the CG wiki quick tip that, uh, that show you how to attach sound effects to, I think, a breaking glass in chops. Um, I also have a longer uh, series of tutorials that would show you how to export uh, data like this as a MIDI file, which you could take into uh, Reaper, or Ableton, or Pro Tools, or whatever, GarageBand, and then really customize your sounds. Um, so I've got a tutorial on that. All those links are here. You probably saw some pop-ups for it. So check those out if you're interested to go deeper in chops. And thanks so much for watching.